Hello again everyone and welcome back to Dragon Age 2. We're here in Hightown in Kirkwall and we need to go around making some money. So let's uh, see where we can go here. What's that? That's to leave the area. That looks like it's going to Low Town. So we'll, 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 we'll explore the rest of Hightown first before we do anything else. Are you really not afraid of apostates? Not even a little? Sunshine, I'm a dwarf. In case you missed that detail. Dwarves aren't completely immune to magic, you know. No, no, no. Yeah. I meant there are at least 30 people in this town who'd murder my family over trade deals. Who has time to worry about apostates with a merchant's guild breathing down your neck? In that case, I see. Yeah. Varric has more, has more, more, yeah, worrying things to worry about, let's say. Anything around here? There's not, there's not, there's not a lot to interact with, is there? Right. At the height of the Savinter Imperium slave trade, Kirkwall's elite prospered beyond dreams of avarice. High Sound was built for the wealthiest slavers, its glitzy mansions rising atop a great wall of rock that borders on one side the waking sea. Low Town cowered on its other side until Kirkwall slaves rose to plunder and destroy High Town's riches. Today, High Town's prominent buildings are the keep, home to the ruling Viscount, and the Chantry, home to the Grand Cleric and the city's religious centre. Both are converted estates that once housed wealthy magisters, rebuilt and converted after the uprising. Okay. First the then the grocer. Not the haberdasher and the grocer. So that's the way to the Viscount's keep. Right, so we'll we'll head to the northern area of Hightown first. See, see what's up here. We've been over here, haven't we? Yes, we have. Yes. Okay. So, let's go down here. So this is the market. So, oh yeah, I realised I completely forgot to actually sell my stuff, didn't I? Um, what does he have? He has armour for us. Is there a way to compare? There is? How do So you can compare what you're selling but not what you're buying. Oh no. Oh, it's cuz we're not wearing a, a headpiece. Ah. Gotcha. That makes sense. Those are some nice boots actually. Yeah, though. Oh wow. But those are more. Oh, those those are more for mages, aren't they? So I can. Uh... Has to be me who uses that that hood. Well, it's uh. Well, so basically, you'd probably buy that if you're a mage, but you're not. So, oh, I'm not. Sorry. Oh, all of these are only available to my to my character. Well, that's a weird one. That really is a weird one. This definitely does seem very mage-based stuff as well. Okay, okay, right. We don't need all this. So let's sell these things. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, sell all the junk. Oh, do we not do we have any junk? We do. Ah, dark spawn armor fragment, there we go. Other backpack. Oh! Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll buy a backpack. That's useful for us. Plus five mana stamina. Uh, we'll buy those for Bethany. I hope I hope I'm not making a mistake by by buying these things. I I assume we we will still have enough money. Otherwise, we yeah, it's I've made made a mistake. Okay. Can we afford anything here? A bit. Hey, adventurer, come replace your old crap. Charming. Okay, so what else? Oh, hello. That's very nice. That's not so nice. That's that's that that's that that's a good shield. Yeah. Um.
We'll buy that shield. Uh, that's quite good for us. He doesn't. He doesn't sell any uh, any other stuff, though, does he? No. So if we equip that shield, oh, so it's a slightly better shield for us. Again, probably shouldn't actually be buying all this stuff, considering our current um, our current play uh, uh, situation. Ah, look at this! So it's so nice. Like there is, there is some really nice stuff, isn't there? Wow. Look at, see, 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 look at that nice plate armor. Yeah, we'll buy, we'll, we'll buy the plate armor for us. But, but, but we won't buy anything else. We'll leave everything else as is. Nothing else. I've spent like three gold, but yeah. Oh, oh, hang on. Oh god, it's so tempting. I'll have that. It's not, it's not that expensive. I'm so bad for this. Like, honestly. Oh. Okay. Have we... Oh, oh we can actually speak to Hubis. Another Ferelden street rat. Are you here to waste my time, or do you actually have coin to? Oh, I literally just just bought bought you bought you something. Yeah, mind your manners. Greet customers that way, and you'll earn more beatings than coins. Hey, I'm having a bad week. There are few Ferelden's of means in Kirkwall. Forgive me. What do you sell? Are you an armorer, a weaponsmith? My stock is varied. What all my wares have in common, however, is quality. Only the best. My distinguished patrons. See for yourself. Okay. I trust you are well satisfied with your last purchase. I don't offer refunds. You don't offer refunds? That's terrible. I'm disgusted by that. Okay. Worthy. It's a nice, that's an oh, interesting oh, name. Time no see, my friend. Worthy. When did you get back into town? Oh. oh Must have met, met, so met this guy in the past year. You still with the red iron? It was just a year you were with them, right? I'm funding an expedition. I'm looking to become an explorer, of a sort. I heard. Bartrand's hard to take, but his information is usually good. Hard to take? <laughs> That's putting it mildly. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I still have my old contacts. You need some rune crafting done, I can arrange it for you. Oh. Take care, Hawk. Don't get dead. <laughs> Don't get dead. That's... You've unlocked a crafting station from which you can order items, given a recipe and resources. Another station is now... What, what was that? Pardon me. Um... Is that, is, is, is that in the codex? That, 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 uh... Companions home bases. Okay, well, we'll, we'll try and remember that. I, I definitely missed that tutorial thing, but uh, do we... Oh, okay, so it's just here. You can order runes if you discover the right combination of resources along with a recipe. Resources you've discovered are permanently available to craftsmen. Placing an order costs money. Once you've ordered a rune, use the enchantment's app... Fucking hell. Really? Um. So we need lyrium for that. We, we don't have any lyrium, so... Oh, it's 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 nice to have the option though to order some runes if we if we really need it. Okay, let's head back up here. Oh, there's nothing here. Right, okay. Oh, we're controlling Bethany as well. I just realised that. Don't particularly need to control Bethany. I mean, we we could control Bethany, but I I I prefer to stick to my um, usual character. Right, let's check the west side of High Town then, see what see if there's any more interesting stuff there. Because we've not found a lot so far, it must be said, in terms of uh, money making opportunities. The Chantry Courtyard. That, that guy seems to have lost his dog. Sebastian, stop this madness. The hell is he doing? Chantry cannot condone revenge, Sebastian. It is my right, my duty. 
to show these assassins there is nowhere in the free marches to hide. Oh, he's a Scottish fella. This is murder. No. What happened to my family was murder. Oh, Jesus. He does not seem a happy bunny. Okay. Okay, let's speak to Chanter Talitha. And Andraste did say, those who harm a house of the maker have done harm unto the maker himself. So that must, must be talking about Sebastian there then. Chanter's board. A grave crime was committed against all free-thinking men and women in the free marches. The ruling Vale family in Starkhaven, my family, was brutally murdered down to the youngest babe in arms. This massacre was carried out by members of the Flint Mercenary Company. I hereby offer a bounty on the head of each Flint Company soldier in the Kirkwall vicinity. Prince Sebastian Vale. I accept that, sure. Prince Sebastian Vale of Starkhaven has offered a bounty on members of the Flint Mercenary Company who have killed his family. So, Kirkwall docks at night for the Flint Company mercenaries. Go to Sundermount to find the Flint Company mercenaries and go to the Wounded Coast. Okay, we'll remember that. So, he so we head into the Chantry. Good day. Though the lands suffer a thousand wrongs, the Maker yet notices the smallest of deeds. Okay. Right, let's head into the Chantry. See, see if there's anything interesting here. Right. Your family used to be noble, right? By some definition of the term. Do you ever wonder what your life would have been like if you were still noble? Sunshine, nobility is just an expensive lifestyle. I've already got one of those. <laughs> True. Have power too. And responsibilities. Estates, servants, investments, mercenaries, assassins. <laughs> We've still got all those things. It's sunnier here, and nobody calls me my lord. Yeah. I think I can live with that. So there's the com the commandments of the maker. These truths the maker has revealed to me, as as there is but one world, one life, one death, there is but one God, and he is our maker. They are sinners who have given their loves to, to, to false gods. Magic exists to serve man and never to rule over him. Foul and corrupt are they who have taken his gift and turned it against his children. They shall be named Malificar, accursed ones. They shall find no rest in this world or beyond. All men are the work of our maker's hands, from the lowest slaves to the highest kings. Those who bring harm without provocation to the least of his children are hated and accursed by the maker. Those who bear false witness and work to deceive others, know this, there is but one truth, and all things are known to our maker, and he shall judge their lies. All things in this world are finite, what one man gains, another has lost. Those who steal from their brothers and sisters, do harm to their livelihood and to their peace of mind, our maker sees this with a heavy heart. Right. On this side, anything in here? No, okay. As we were then. We shall not be left to wander the drifting roads of the fade. For there is no. There is no. Oh, Maker, why can't I remember how it goes? <laughs> God damn me. This Canary are a frightening sort. Demons, the whole lot of them. I do wish the Viscount would have them run off. It would They're just a different race, God. Through here like a herd of cattle. Thank you. The amount of noise you're making is ridiculous. May the Maker's gaze be upon you. The first of the Maker's children watched across the veil and grew jealous of the life they could not feel, could not... Much? No, <laughs> can't be right. She's struggling. Andraste, bribe the Maker. Oh my god. There was once a tiny fishing village on the waking sea that, that was set upon by the Tavinja Imperium, which enslaved the villagers to be sold in the markets of uh, Minrathaus. Leaving behind only the old and the infirm, one of the captives was the child Andraste. She was raised in slavery and in a, in a foreign land. She escaped, then made the long and treacherous journey back to her homeland alone. She rose from nothing to be the wife of an, of an Alamari warlord. Each day she, she sang to the gods, asking them to help her people who remained slaves in Tavinta. 
The false gods of the mountains and the winds did not answer her, but the true god did. The maker spoke, he showed her all the works of his hands, the fade, the world, and all the creatures therein. He showed her how men had forgotten him, lavishing devotion upon mute idols and demons, and now and, and how he had left them to their fate. But her voice had reached him, and so captivated him that he offered her her place at his side, that she might rule all of creation. But Andraste would not forsake her people. She begged the maker to return to save his children from the cruelty of the Imperium. Reluctantly, the maker agreed to give man another chance. Andraste went back to her husband, Maferath, and told him that uh, told him all that the maker had revealed to her. Together, they rallied the Alamari and marched forth against the mage lords of the Imperium, and the maker was with them. The maker's sword was creation itself. Fire and flood, fit famine and earthquake. Everywhere they went, Andraste sang to the people of the maker, and they heard her. The ranks of the Andraste's followers grew, and so they were a vast tide washing over the Imperium. And when Maferath saw that the people loved Andraste and not him, a worm grew within his heart and gnawing upon it. At last, the armies of Andraste and Maferath stood, stood before the very gates of Min Minrathaus, but Andraste was not with them, for Maferath had schemed in secret to hand Andraste over to, over to the Tevinter. For this, the Archon would give Maferath all the lands to the south of the Waking Sea. And so, before all the armies of the Alamari and of Tevinter, Andraste was tied to a stake and burned while her earthly husband turned his armies aside and did nothing, for his heart had been devoured. But as he had watched the pyre, the Archon softened. He took pity on Andraste and drew his sword and granted her the mercy of a quick death. The Maker wept for his beloved, cursed Maferath, cursed mankind for their betrayal, and turned once again from creation, taking only Andraste with him. And Our Lady sits still at his side, where she still urges him to take pity on his children. It's a very brutal story, isn't it? But, yeah, I suppose most religious things are. Grand Cleric Elthina. I'm sorry you had to witness that disgraceful scene by the Chanter's board. I am Elthina, Grand Cleric of Kirkwall. Sebastian's normally a good lad, but he's had a terrible shock. Who is he? Sebastian. Was that his name? Sebastian Vale. He was affirmed here nearly a decade ago. He had just been invested as a brother when we got the news about his family. I'm afraid he reacted rashly, denied his vows and left the Chantry. If the Maker wills it, he will return to himself before it's too late. So he's some kind of priest? He is an initiate of the faith. As a man, he cannot serve as a mother would, but he has led the chant here many times. Before last week, I would have said he was the most faithful of our true believers. Well, he said someone murdered his family. Sebastian is the youngest son of the ruling family of Starkhaven. They were overthrown recently, violently. Sebastian is the only surviving member. I don't exactly blame him for being angry in that case. Royalty. Prince Sebastian Vale. If. He succeeds in his pledge to take back his lands. He made a vow to the Maker to put worldly concerns behind him. It is a sin to forswear himself for a mere title. I'm going to help him. Yeah. I think his family deserves to be avenged. Sebastian would spend his coin to buy men's lives, the same as those who attacked his family. No matter how justified he feels, that is murder. And when he returns, I will tell him so again. Sebastian Vale. In the face of danger, sometimes the bravest thing is to stand back and trust that the Maker will see justice done. And Sebastian Vale is the only surviving son of the ruling family of Starkhaven, which was murdered in a violent coup d'etat. Sebastian cannot forget the irony that he still lives only because his family was so ashamed of his drinking and womanizing that they committed him to the Kirkwall Chantry against his will. After initially uh, rejecting a priest lifestyle, Sebastian was more uh, was more surprised than anyone when he when he realised that his show of faith had turned real. Since then, his belief in the Maker and his plan for Theodas have been unshakable. Embracing his new role, Sebastian took vows of poverty and chastity to become a, uh, to, to, to become a sworn brother of the Chantry until word of his family's death forced him to take up worldly concerns once again. 
Grand Cleric Althena, Sebastian's mentor and friend, hopes to convince him to walk away from the struggle for Starcave and return to, return to the good works of the Chantry. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, strangely. City of Starkhaven. Starkhaven, the largest city in the Free Marches, sits, sits on the bank of the great... Uh, Minanta River. Wow, why can't I speak? I remember my visit to the city quite clearly. I was taken up the river by barge, a cumbersome vessel that moved at a stately pace and, and disembarked by the city's central square. An impressive spa space with marble fountains and surrounded by kingly estates. Starkhaven's wealth was truly a sight to behold. A path paved in granite led up to the grandest building I've ever seen. My guide indicated that this was the resistance, the residence of Starkhaven's ruler, Prince Vale. We supped at, at the table of my guide's closest friend. I was presented with a variety of dishes from the region. One in particular stood out, fish and egg pie. Ugh. Starkhaven's most famous dish. Three, three deboned fish caught just that day were cooked in a porcelain vessel with boiled eggs, dried fruit, spices, and thickened cream, all topped with a light crust. Superb. I suppose like I could, I could do that actually. I, I, I could eat that. Yeah, the maker. There was no word for heaven or for earth, for sea or sky. All that existed was silence. Then the voice of the maker rang out the first word, and his word became all that might be. Dream and idea, hope and fear, endless possibilities, and, and, and from it made his firstborn. And he said to them, In my image I forge you. To you I give dominion. Over all that exists, by your will, may all things be done. Then in the centre of heaven he called forth a city with towers of gold, street, streets of music for cobblestones, and banners which flew without wind. There he dwelled waiting to see the wonders his children would create. The children of the Maker gathered before his golden throne and sang hymns of praise unending, but their songs were the songs of the cobblestones. They shone with the golden lights reflected from the Maker's throne. They, they held forth the banners that flew on their own. And, and the voice of the Maker shook the fate, saying, In my image I have wrought. My firstborn, you have been given dominion over all that exists. By your will, all things are done. Yet you do nothing. The realm I have given you is formless, ever-changing. And he knew he had wrought amiss, so the Maker turned from his firstborn and took from the Fade a measure of its living flesh, and placed it apart from the spirits and spoke to it, saying, Here I decree opposition in all things, for earth, sky, for winter, summer, for darkness, light, by my will alone is bound sundered and the world given new life. And no longer was it formless, ever-changing, but it held fast, immutable. With words for heaven and for earth, sea and sky, at last did the maker from the living world make men immutable as the substance of, of the earth, with souls made of dream and idea, hope and fear, endless possibilities. Then the maker said, To you, my second born, I grant this gift. In your heart shall burn unquenchable flame, all consuming and never satisfied. From the fade I crafted you, and to the fade you shall return. Each night in dreams that, that you may always remember me. And then the Maker sealed the gates of the Golden City, and there he dwelled, waiting to see the wonders his children would create. Yes, sure. And then the Sermons of Divine Renata I. The weakness of mortal will is the great failing of all the Maker's children. We trade our honour as if it were the cheapest of currency. We do not understand what integrity is or what it is truly worth. From this ignorance, original sin was born. At some time, each of us has thought, uh, what does it matter if I keep hold of my integrity? I am but one mortal, I am powerless. How blind we all are. The virtue of a single slave destroyed by the Tevinter Imperium. The dishonour of one man drove the Maker from our sight. I tell you truly, not, nothing but the integrity of our hearts will win the love of the Maker back to us. It is all the power we shall ever possess to change this world for good or for ill. Well, we should all have integrity, it's very true. Um, okay. Is there anything upstairs in the Chantry before we end this episode? Out of curiosity. More books. Right. We're going we're gonna to end this episode here. Uh, I think, and then we'll we'll we will read that that excerpt. I think. Uh, yes. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I do hope you've enjoyed. If you have, not please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll catch you in the next episode of Dragon Age Two. Thanks again, guys. Have a nice day. Bye bye.